everybody thank you for joining all things division three soccer with simple coach and jackie i am simple coach and that there that's jackie um thanks for tuning in to around d3 uh where i go through some of the things that popped into my mind over the last week on around division three and where i run through the top 25s for both the men and women um and yeah and so here we roll i was trying to watch it's wednesday evening and i was trying to watch some games that were on which i was had high hopes for but i don't think what was being played was called soccer um okay so to start off you know i am i am mass communicating we ain't one at a time in here we're mass communicating oh yeah that's a powerful new force mm -hmm. Take it, Junior. so i've recently partnered up with a new video platform called goals g-o-l-z um, where I'm going to be providing some of my uh, content um, uh, over to their platform as they get gear up. And they cover a whole host of um, soccer from Champions League to national teams to you name it, uh, to college soccer and in particular Division Three, apparently. So um, I'm going to be providing some content over there uh, in addition to YouTube. So Hopefully you can check it out and to and you know um, stay a while and watch. It's a pretty interesting place, and like I said, your your um, preference for topics is probably can be matched there. So, um, okay, first first one for as much stick as I give Johns Hopkins about their lack of goal scoring, they continue to win. They're at 9-0 oh, no, nah, oh, and 2. They've scored in every game except where they drew 0-0. Of the nine victories, seven of them were 1-0. and oh, And in the last five games, they won all five of those by a score of 1-0. The other two uh, were 2-0. Um, they just tied Washington College 1-1, which I think shows how precarious it is to sometimes play that one one z one zero score line but they're pretty successful on it and they're a darn good team so um yeah okay so remember a few episodes ago i did show on uh ties and the amount of ties in both the men's and women's game um that i thought were you know that there was a lot more ties this year than there were last year obviously the change in ot uh, rules really having an impact. Um, J.K. Nezik, did I say that right? Over at D3 Soccer uh, compiled some information on the top 25 teams um, and the number of ties they've had through week six. So top 25 teams um, how many ties they've had through week six. In the lowest number of ties they had in a given year was in 2017, where after six weeks, there were 15 ties. And the most were in 2019 that were at 34. I think the average was like 25 ties. Um, and in 2022, so far this year, for the top 25, there were 57 ties. Um, Kristen Shirk um, over at d3soccer.com also tapped into the database. And, um, and he was just looking at the yearly averages of total matches. And you're looking anywhere on the low range of about 8% to 9% of games ended in a tie between 2014 through 2021. That excludes 2020 uh, for COVID, obviously. Um, and you're looking at, you know, 3,900 plus games, somewhere in that range, or 3,800 plus games. In 2022, so far of all games played, 
So it's about 2,400 according to his data. The current number of ties in games ended up at 18.9%. So clearly a doubling of the number of ties. However, anecdotally, I had heard from somebody, maybe one of the coaches in the interviews, um, maybe it was Brandon Bianco, who uh, at the coach at Denison, who mentioned that last year of all games that went into ties, it was a 50-50 split between what what games ended in ties and what games ended in a victory for a team. Um, so the jump doesn't really surprise if that's the case. But like I said, I think that I'm going to say that's anecdotal because I, I can't confirm it. And I, and I seem to recall somebody telling me that. So anyhow, so ties, you know, we have them. Okay. So came to a realization that in division three, there are some immutable facts, you know, and it's regardless of the polls, regardless of wins, losses, ties, and they've come down to these, you know, that great, great show, the real world on MTV first season, of course, the true story of seven strangers picked to live in a house, have their lives taped, find out what, what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. Well, I think that's responsible for making cable television, to paraphrase the FCC chairman, Newton Minow, uh, a vast wasteland of bad television. I blame all reality shows on that one season one of the real world, as much as I loved it. Second immutable fact, Generalissimo Francisco Franco is still dead, and I confirmed it. My crack research team confirmed it earlier today. And then finally, finally, in spite of my powerful message to the world in my last episode of Around D3, the University of Rochester still has a paywall. Oh, and a minor correction to that as well. They are not the 20th largest endowment in universities in the United States with $2.4 billion in assets. They are the 29th largest endowment of a university um, with $2.4 billion in assets. That has a paywall. Okay. Lastly. There are two men's teams who remain undefeated. Chicago keeps win keeps its winning ways. And last week I had said that there was a second team, Eau Claire, Wisconsin Eau Claire, um, that was undefeated. Um, they since lost. But I also realized that there was a third team that I should have said last week, but I will say it today. It's Western Connecticut. Um, I think they have a big game against Drew either tonight or tomorrow um, that hangs in the balance. For the women, it was a rough week. Only Case Western Reserve, keep your eye out, and Calvin remain undefeated. And amazingly, Calvin has yet to concede a goal this season. So, okay. So those are my notes. Next, we're going to roll with the top 25s. And okay, so here are the top 25 women's teams in the U.S. of A. So, at number 25, and having not been ranked before, University of Scranton at 9-2-1. And, and since losing, since losing to Misericordia earlier in the year, um, They've had uh, three clean sheets in a row, and they've scored eight goals. Number 24, also not ranked, um, but had big wins against NESCAC rivals Connecticut and Colby, is at number 24, Middlebury, at nine and three. Number 23, Puget Sound, up to 10 and three record. They keep winning, and then and they're on a six-game winning streak. So got to give them credit. 
At 22, Bowden down six spots. They are 7-3-1. and one. They had a tie to Trinity, and then they lost to Amherst. So um, that, that may be a little too harsh, um, but um, so that's where they're at. Number 21, another NESCAC, Williams College at 8-2-1, and one, up to... They had a tough stretch playing for playing against Amherst, Connecticut, and MIT, but they won all three of them. So, um, really got to, you know, give give them their props. Number twenty up four is Emory um, at eight and two. Since a couple of losses at the beginning of September, they've won seven straight. At 19, Carnegie Mellon, same spot. Um, they tied NYU and then they beat Brandeis. But I think this weekend is going to be a make or break. Um, so they play Chicago and Wash U. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty intense weekend for Carnegie Mellon. Number 18, up four spots uh, with a record of 11 0 1 is Trinity from Texas. You know, they they keep winning, and they've only conceded two goals all season. So, um, really impressive. Another Texas school, uh, the Crusaders from Mary Harden Baylor at 17th, down one at 10-0-1. You know, I'm, I'm, they're down one spot um, because they just tied um, a game they shouldn't have tied. Uh, and... Um, yeah, uh, I think it's probably just a bump in the road. I think they are good. Um, but, yeah. At 16, Babson down six spots. I mean, they lost two in a row to Bowden and MIT. Um, so. Okay, at 15, another team I really like, Virginia Wesleyan. 9-1-1, uh, one, one. they're up three. They have a five-game winning streak going into a big game on Saturday against Washington and Lee. So um, that's going to be – that's going to determine a lot right there. Up another spot this this week at 14 is Pacific Lutheran. They had a tie against George Fox, and then they turned around and, and, and beat Lewis and Clark. I think it was 5-1. Um, so at 13, uh, William Smith of Hobart and Smith, uh, nine, one and two up one. They're on a five game winning streak. So Tufts, same as before. They had a tough loss at home against Trinity. Then they turned around and dropped nine goals on, uh, oh. on New England college. So they stand at seven, two and one. Um, Wartburg, 11-0-2, same spot. They had wins against Sim Simpson and Central and then tied Dubuque away. So, again, I'm just wondering what are considered bumps in the road for, for some of these teams. But Number 10, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse, 11-1-1. Uh, and one. Uh, they had, They're on a four-game winning streak. At nine is Pomona Pitzer, down one. And then at number eight is Amherst uh, with nine and two record. They're, um, you know, they had big wins against Bowden and Wesleyan, so um, they're a talented group. So um, definitely deserve the ranking. And then up at the same spot as last week, scoring about five game goals per game. Um, is College of New Jersey, the runner-ups from last year, stand at 10-1-1. One, and one. So another team I'm really impressed with is Calvin, 12-0-1. Um, they keep racking up the Ws. And again, like I mentioned it earlier, you know, they haven't conceded a goal. So um, at number, these all stay the same as last week. So 10-0-2, uh, Messiah. Um, They've scored 16 goals uh, in the last four games since their tie with Misericordia. Another team I've been telling people to watch out for, 10-0, Case Western Reserve, undefeatable. Um, their march continues. They had two good wins against Brandeis and NYU. So, 
Number three, super talented Johns Hopkins. Since tying Carnegie Mellon, they've gone on and on a seven-game winning streak, and they haven't conceded a goal. Um, and in that time, they scored about three goals per game. So they can definitely put the ball in the back of the net. Number two, Misericordia. They keep winning. Um, just keep winning. In the last four games, they've scored 13 goals, and they've conceded zero. And then at number one, to be expected, because they're reigning champs and they just keep doing what they need to do to to stay there at 11 0 one Christopher Newport. So, uh, comments, concerns, criticisms down below and on to the men's top 25. Okay, so let's turn our attention to the top 25 men's teams in this great country we call the U.S. of A. Not sure we call it the U.S. of A, but it's one of the names. Um, okay, so first up, surprisingly to me, number 25 at 5, 3, and 2, down three spots in the rankings is Connecticut. Um, they beat Eastern C Connecticut and Williams, and I thought that was something there. There was the churn. There was like that was a turning point, and then they fell to Middlebury. So, and it's not going to get any easier because the national champions are now going to have to face Babson and Colby, followed by Amherst. So um, these are going to be, I think, do or die for Tufts or excuse me for Connecticut. So. Next up at 24, Tufts University down one uh, at 4-2-4. Four, and four. They tied Babson and Colby, and then they they just trounced Trinity. Um, quite frankly, I think in their case, it's a bit of a transition year. Um, I don't know if that's the way they view it, but that's the way it looks from you know my vantage point. Number 23, not ranked before. You know, one of the two undefeated teams in the country, not rated Western, not ranked Western Connecticut, um, putting them in a 23rd uh, undefeated. And they've only conceded. The other thing I look at is they've only conceded six goals in those 14 games. Right. That's less than half a goal a game. That's that's pretty, pretty impressive. So. Uh, down two spots. Yeah, I don't know why it says plus five there. Okay, I don't know. That was a typo. So Bowden down two spots. Um, wins away at Husson and Trinity. Um, and then they tied Amherst. So next up, Paywall. If you want to find out who's on twenty uh, number 21 spot and the reasons for it, uh, you have to pay me $5.95. At 20, not ranked before is Babson um, at 8-3-2. Three, three and two. They've um, tied Tufts, and then they won three straight, including who was ranked, Coast Guard Academy. Um, they, have, um, they have a game coming up, I think, this weekend. It's against Connecticut that, you know, it could push Babson higher and Connecticut lower or vice versa, so... Um, big important match for them. The next up as well, not ranked Franklin and Marshall. Um, this is my first ranking for them uh, this year. I've been kind of I was critical of them last year because I didn't like the way they were playing, and I sort of watched a few games, and and they've been steadily winning games, and they most recently tied Gettysburg, and they look much more like an organized team and don't play into that chaos as much as I thought they did last year. Um, at 18th is Gettysburg, same as last week, 7-1-3. and three. They beat Susquehanna, and then they tied against FNM. So at 17, Christopher Newport at 8-2-1. They were not ranked before. You know, they, they're they winning where they need to, and they put in a really good game against Washington and Lee. So I'm going to give them credit here. This one I kept going back and forth with, um, Montclair State. They haven't been ranked, and yeah, they're ranked now 16th. So they're that's a pretty significant jump. I'm not sure of this one. Um, I'm not sure if they've got it all figured out, but 
you know, they they do have some solid wins as of late, including against Stockton, who was undefeated, you know, up until two games ago, three games ago, and a really tough New Jersey brawl against Rowan, where they won resoundingly three nothing. So, I'm going to give them, yeah, I'm going to give them a nod. Um, and like I said, I think man for man, they might be one of the most talented teams out there. So. Um, okay, 15, Carnegie Mellon down two spots. They lost against NYU, and then they beat Brandeis, and, and they have a big game on Friday. They're at 9-1-1. One, and one. Down two spots, Clarkson. They had uh, ties at St. Lawrence and a loss to Hobart. And then, you know, they play against Vassar, who I thought about ranking, putting in the rankings. Um uh, they, they play this weekend, and I and I think this, yeah, this could be, that's going to be a tough game. And they, they, if Clarkson wants to stay where they're at, they're going to have to really show that they can handle a team like Vassar. And if Vassar wants on the rankings, they're going to have to show that they can handle Clarkson. So, again, another team I'm a fan of. I really enjoy the way they play. I love Marcos Villa. Um, the goal scorer for Luther College. They're at eight, one, and three, up two spots. They beat Loris, and then they they drew three. They had a three three draw. But my thing is, you know, they can score, and I'm thinking the tie was a little bit of a bump in the road, especially at a three three draw. Like, what kind of craziness was that? Next up at number twelve, up five spots. Seven, one, and four, up five spots. You know, you gotta hand it to the mom, mammoths. Um, they're they're just really resilient, and they make things happen. And so you give them credit for that. And their only loss is to Tufts. So, um, okay. Uh, next up after that, up three spots at eight, zero, oh, and three is Hamilton College. It wins against Connecticut and Utica, and they and that just keeps pushing them higher. So. Going to keep watching them. North Park, same spot. They're back to winning after their loss to Chicago. They're a 10 and 1. So, I, yeah, this is one of the uh, easily, the, I think the top, I'm looking across the top 10 and I'm thinking, yeah, they deserve to be there uh, in spite of the loss to Chicago. So, uh, number nine, another team I enjoy watching, Cortland State, 8 3 and 2. Um, They've scored 16 goals since tying Potsdam, and I think they're starting to sort of come together. So, number eight, Middlebury, same as last week. They had wins against Wesley and Colby in Connecticut, um, and that puts them in a great spot um, in the NESCAC. Number seven, uh, Washington and Lee. I, I dropped them one probably because of everyone else in the top 10. You know, they had, they tied Lynchburg, they tied Christopher Newport. Um, I still wonder sometimes, depends on the games that I watch. Uh, they definitely have the talent and the, the ability. And so I'm thinking once the tournament begins, when their conference, when the ODAC conference began, tournament begins, and then the NCAAs roll around, these guys will be hitting their strides. So not worried about them. Number six, they're down one. Um, Johns Hopkins at 9-0-3. Oh, they tied Washington College, which, as I mentioned in my earlier comments, that it kind of shows the precarious nature of them having limited scoring opportunities. So, I mean, I, I think there would be no question as to where they belong if they scored multiple goals a game instead of just the one. So, Okay, the other team I'm a fan of, um, Calvin. Uh, 10, 1, and 2. They're up two spots. They put four goals in on Trine, and then they beat Hope. Um, yeah. You know, they they just they they just keep finding the back of the net and keeping the keeping their opposition out. So I, I'm giving them a lot of credit here. And I almost thought about putting them uh, switching these spots. Sp switching spots with Kenyon, but I left Kenyon there, um, who, uh, a 10 and one I am not convinced by Kenyon, and I'll be honest there. Um, 
They beat Carthage 1-0. I am not sure that, that I'm hoping that that was not their best. I think they're struggling with injuries and it's just making things a little bit difficult for them. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on these. I'm not sure on Kenyon right now. So, and let's see, number three, Stevens Institute of Technology. They tied FDU Florham. Um, I was at that game. Uh, and then they turned around and beat, I forget who, two to one. Um, they're back on track. So, and I still think they're, um, I still think they're, you know, very, very good, you know, very, very good. So number two, this is where the controversy begins. I'm sticking with you. Number two, University of Chicago at 12 and 0 undefeated. Um, they keep rolling along. Um, and, you know, obviously number one is Messiah. I just think Messiah has something going, a very dynamic attack. They have a wonderful, wonderful, speedy winger, Matt McDonald, who scores goals like Matt. I think he's up to 12 and then has like four or five assists. Um, but they just have an incredible, incredible squad. So, um, so yeah, so that's the top 25 comments, compliments, criticisms you can drop them all down below or shoot me an email and um yeah hope you enjoyed so i've sort of been going back and forth over how i wanted to start this episode of around d3 or how i should end this episode um i am not a journalist i am I am not a professional at this. I just have fun, like talking to people and obviously love the game. So when I see something um, that revolves around Division Three and in, in soccer, um, I take notice, uh, good and bad. Um, you know, over the weekend, uh, news came out that Drew Rulicki of York College passed away unexpectedly in his dorm room. Um, he uh, was a soccer player on uh, the York men's team. Um, was, you know, from from what I've read and and seen, you know, an outstanding young man and uh, with a lot to look forward to. And you know, as a father, as a parent, I could only imagine um, how that would hit me if, uh, God forbid, that I got similar news. And I don't know exactly what to say. I know whatever I do say, it won't come close to um, making his friends and family, you know, feel better. Um, um, and and hopefully mend what's probably a broken heart. Um, but I do believe in the power of prayer, and um, I just wanted to, you know, encourage everyone, whoever your higher power may be, to say a prayer to Drew and for his, um, for the repose of his soul. Um, for his parents to find the strength to to get through the days, the upcoming days, to his family and friends um, who are no doubt impacted by this, and you know, pray for strength for the York College men's team and the York College community that they find some um, bit of peace um, in this in the sad passing of Drew. So. Um, yeah, so I figured I had to say something and, um, you know, and when you get a chance, uh, quick prayer would be, I'm sure would be welcome to his family. 